Hi, this is Christina Eve, and welcome to Shine Strong, Live Long. This is a segment called Shine Sessions, where I spotlight and have conversations with people who have said yes to God and people who are allowing God's light to shine strong through them. And as a result, the impact that they will leave will live long in the lives of others. And I'm really excited about this guest, you guys. I don't even know how to properly introduce him because he has pivoted from the person that I knew in college. He was a football player and a student back then, but now he's an actor. And I need to know how that happened and how he got to that point so that we all, who are aspiring actors, can get there too. So Terry Allen Brown Jr., introduce mm. yourself. Welcome. The the full government. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, man, I don't even know where to start. So if we going all the way back to since since I've known you, like you said, I was a student football player back then. Um, but film has always been something that I loved. It's something that I've always gravitated towards. Um, I've always been a storyteller. So just stories in general, just a, a visual, a moving picture has always just connected with me in, in some way. And um, I actually modeled as a kid. So I was kind of in the entertainment industry a little bit, you know, and um, yeah, it's just, I don't, I don't know. Film has just always affected me in such a, in such a way that um, was captivating, you know, and I, I always wanted to know what it would be like to be an actor. So it's something I thought about for a long time. Um, my senior year of high school, I took a theater class that I loved. But at that point, I was kind of like, I'm 18, but I'm like, oh, it's too late. Like, I should have started already, you know, I'm going to play football next year, whatever, whatever. Um, but I, it just kind of stuck with me, you know. And then when I graduated college, came back home, I majored in sports management. So I ended up working um, in Atlanta for a golf company for a little bit, then for the Harlem Globetrotters for a couple of years. Um, and while I was with them, I was really just like, I was like, man, I want to try this acting thing for real. So I started going to class and just learning, working on the craft, learning whatever I could, um, applying for extra roles on shows and movies and stuff like that. And I was just falling more in love with it. I was just like, man, like I really, I would really love to do this. But you know, when you're at that point, fresh in your adult career, you're like, am I supposed to just quit this nine to five job that I have and just go full fledged into this, this new thing that, I, that I'm enjoying, you know, that don't have no kind of promise with income, no security, nothing? Or do I try to, you know, bounce between the two? And then somehow 2020 pandemic. Okay. Hello? Mm -hmm. Pandemic. <laughs> you know? And so um at that time with the Globe Charters, you know, we canceled the tour. They they let everybody go because there was just no work available because the world was kind of shut down at the time. If, if you remember you you remember that, right? I yeah. think I do remember. I think I was alive during that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um so I didn't have a job for for several months trying to work my way back into the sports industry and it just it wasn't happening. Like it was very clear that that's not where the Lord wanted me to go back. Like he made that. He didn't, he didn't say it. But you can only get rejected from so many job opportunities where you're like, okay, God, like there's there's so much resistance here that clearly this isn't the direction you want me to go back to. Um, and I had just been in class and been with a coach who um, is a believer as well, which was super dope and a blessing to be a part of and ended up staying in his class for like two years. But towards the end of 2020, I was just kind of like, man, like I, I really I really enjoy this. Like I feel alive. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's just one of those things where you're just like – I. Like, I want to do this, you know? And so um, into 2020, I made the decision, like, I'm just going to put everything I have into this. And that's what I did. And so, um, yeah, one thing led to another. And now now we're here somehow. Yeah, look, it's been paying off, I can tell. Like, your Instagram, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh, let me get him on the I'm show before he gets too big. And then he's going to like, <laughs> who, who, who are you again? I'm sorry. No, no. it's never going to be that. Never, never, never. <laughs> but look, I... I I like that story because I like to hear how people journey from what they think life is going to look like to just being more and more passionate about something. Like when you said that it just felt, you felt alive, that's usually, um, that's like a, a trend that I hear with people who like discover something new um, within them, I guess, discover more of a potential and be like, oh, okay, I can, I can do this. I saw one of your, um, I guess audition tape where you were crying. I was like, yo, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my just a little, just a little practice, you know. Yeah, just a little practice. No, that was that's really good. So I'm I'm impressed. So I will say I had no idea, um, <laughs> like no idea, um, how someone went from sports to acting. Um, do you do any any of the background that you um, have experience in, like sports and uh, sports management, and with the goal? Do you use any of that with your acting? So far, none. <laughs> so far, <laughs> I've used absolutely nothing. Like I'm like, man, this degree was expensive. Oh, but, still uh, <laughs> expensive. Every month, but, it's uh, expensive, right? You know, and so. Um, but no, I, I honestly haven't haven't gotten to play like an athlete or anything yet. So I'm like, at least let me use some like athletic ability or something. But it hasn't it hasn't happened yet. But I know I know it's coming at some point though. I believe it. I I do believe it. So we'll just keep an eye out for that. I will say, um, so as a Christian, of course, that's the question, right? Yeah. As a Christian, how how do you navigate that industry um, as an as an actor? Like, how does that play a role in what you do? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean that that is the role. Like that's that's I can't I can't navigate anything without without that being my foundation. And um, man, I'm just grateful to have that foundation because of the spaces I've been in so far, it's, it's kept me grounded. Um, I feel like when you first start acting, like the advice that you get is like, say yes to everything, like, because it's hard enough to book anything, you know, there's like, you don't, you ain't got no time to be saying no to a job. And um, so far for me, because I feel like the Lord's fingerprints have just been all over my career so far. Like I, I've never felt that to just say yes to whatever, because as you as you've seen, once something's on tape, once once it's recorded, once it's on the internet, it's there forever. You know, there's no getting away yes. from that. You know, and and so I take that into consideration with any audition that I do, any role that I may book. You know, and um, yeah, I just I, I'm in this place where I'm just like I, I know I'm going to be the actor that the Lord wants me to be, regardless. And so if I say no to a project that you know the character may call for me to do something I'm not comfortable with, and it could be life changing, career changing, like I. I have no problem saying no to it because I'm like, that's just, it's not for me. It's yeah. not for me. Um, I, I keep hearing the advice that what's for you is for you. And I truly believe that. And I think my career so far has been, has been evident of that. And um, so to answer your question, that was a, that was a long way to come back to no, <laughs> the no, front, that of, the was front a, of your question. <laughs> no, that was but, perfect. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, I just, I just think um, standing firm in your convictions, you know, like I said before, I, I was blessed to have my first acting coach be a believer. And so he really got to pour into me and I really got to see what it looked like to for him to be in the industry for a while. Um, so we got to have a lot of conversation about like what, you know, what are you comfortable with? How does this look to say no to a director, or to your agent? Or like, just how do you navigate those conversations? And he just always told me, first off, you know, stand firm in your convictions, go to the Lord about it. Um, you know, in your spirit, like if something's not okay, you know? Um, but he also said, make sure you ask as many questions as you can before you just flat out say no to something, you know, because like, like we said, it is a little difficult to be booking stuff out here, you know? And so before you just flat out say no, like at least be willing to have an open dialogue with the director, your agent, producers, whatever it may be, and see if maybe they be, may be willing to gain something for you, use a body double for, you know, whatever the scene may be like, just, just gain all the information so you can make an educated, wise decision. And so that's what I've been able to do so far, which has been a blessing. So Yeah, no, that's perfect. Cause I mean, I like I like your response mainly because uh it, it has wisdom, it carries wisdom with it. Cause a lot of people could just say, Oh no, I'm not gonna do that because that's yo, this is your job. Like job. you need to make money. So <laughs> you are you are like, I like that you said to ask the questions because some people they just flat out they have you know, like realistically, we have to understand that this is your career. And I think you're going to do great in this career. Speaking of great, we're going to talk a little bit more about where you can see this man, because mm -hmm. I saw this, the uh, awesome trailer uh, for something that's coming up. So we'll talk about <laughs> that in a few. But I will say, though, um, advice wise for someone who is um, a believer um, but someone who is, I guess, afraid to take it seriously as far as acting, what advice would you give them? I know you're, you're newer in your career, but 
do you have any advice? Yeah, I mean, I think I think first and foremost, ask yourself what to what capacity do you want to do this? You know, because you could very easily be a part time actor. You know, you can you can self submit for things. You can find an agent that's okay for you know just submitting you for maybe co star roles or just just smaller parts. And that those things are very doable with a nine to five job um, because everybody's in a different situation. Like, thankfully, I'm single and got no obligations. Like, I could just I could just go. That's not everybody's situation. Um, so I would just ask yourself first, like, figure out what kind of actor you want to be. Um, once you make that decision, then I would just make sure that you really love it. Like, because you could think you love it, <laughs> but it's a grind. Like, I've always always just been so like enamored by and just intrigued by the industry in general I've just always been like how is this shot what's the lighting here how do they do this 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 and it just seems so glamorous from the audience's side but it's it's not that way at all and again I'm like still pretty green in it so I can't speak too much and be like I've seen this and that and that but like from what I've seen so far it's like it is not a glamorous job like it's it's a job like any other job you know it, it seems it is a cool job I love it like I wouldn't want to do anything else so I'm not saying that but it's it's a hard job. It's it, there's long hours. There's a lot of rejection. Okay, first and foremost, it's like getting <laughs> an audition is difficult. You know, so it's like if you're, if you're someone who doesn't handle rejection well, hey, <laughs> yeah, you get you get more no's than yeses. That's for sure. You know, and so um, just just the discipline it takes to, you know, go to class and work on the craft and and stay grounded and and finding your second your first job before being an actor is figuring out how to pay the rent because you're acting not paying it you know like that's that's like the hardest part of the job and so I've been pursuing it now this is my fourth year of of being in where I would feel comfortable calling myself an actor I guess um and so I'm like I've worked a bunch of different jobs like because you just gotta you gotta make the ends meet somehow you know and so it's like if you're not okay with the hustle it's just it's probably not gonna work out I don't want to discourage anyone by saying that but you just got to be real about the situation um if you're not willing to you know put in the hard hours if you got to drive uber if you got to drive amazon be a personal trainer and get up at 3 30 in the morning hello speaking from experience okay. are you a personal trainer I, I haven't been doing it this past year but that's what i was doing before i booked this last job yes um so it's you just gotta do what you gotta do and so i feel very called to this space which is why i haven't there's only been one moment where I was like, man, I kind of want to quit. That's only happened one time. And the Lord showed up in that moment. Like he wasn't like, he was like, no, you're not quitting. I'm, I'm going to tell that story real, just real quick. Please. No, tell us, tell us. <laughs> so this was November, 2022. I had just moved into the apartment that I'm in now. I had been personal training all year. Just, I'm just exhausted. Like so tired. I had been living with my sister in Cumming, Georgia, which is about, 30-ish minutes from the gym that I was training at for months. So I'm getting up at like 3.30 in the morning every day to like get to work on time to open the gym up by by 4.45. So I'm just, I'm dead, you know, it's just, it's just exhausting. Yeah, burnout. You know? And, and I love, and I love the personal training job. Like I love my clients. It was fun. It's just, just get tired from balancing that, balancing my own life, my own health, my, my own working out, eating, auditioning, going to class, like all those things. Just, there was a lot going on. So I got to a point where, where I was like, man, I haven't booked anything in like, it's been a minute. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of getting kind of discouraged out here. And I remember texting my sister and just being like, today's the first day that I feel like quitting because like, I'm, I'm broke. Okay. I, I don't even know how I'm about to move into this apartment. Like I'm like, by the grace of God, like, you know, I got approved, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, this is just not, not what I thought it was, you know? And so I was like, I really, I really feel like, I might need to go in a different direction. And then the next day, my agent called me and said that I booked a Hallmark movie. <laughs> like the next day. And I was like, I was like, all right, God. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. This is where I'm supposed to be. And that was really encouraging. So I would say, ask yourself, like, do you, do you feel called to this space? And like, what do you want to get out of it? You know, because I, I feel as a believer, I've never wanted to work at a church per se, because I, I don't want to be surrounded by people who know Jesus all day. Like I want to be around people who don't know him so that I can bring that to the space, you know, and that's not knocking anybody who's at church. I just, that's not where I feel called. No, like this is my, good. my space, you know? And so, um, 
so yeah, it was really encouraging to see that and to have that experience. So I was just like, okay, okay, God, I'm where I'm where I'm supposed to be. So I love that. Oh, thank you for sharing that story <laughs> for real, because that put a lot into perspective. Um, I have one more question for you before we get into like the tea about where we can yeah, watch yeah. you. Um, what is your favorite part about being on set? Cause like, do you see people? Do you get like, oh my gosh, that's Neo, or oh my gosh, that's so awesome. <laughs> um, honestly, like my my favorite part about acting in general so far is just the relationship. Like, I know that sounds like mad. Like, I mean, that was lame. Amazing. I was gonna say like the snacks. <laughs> no, for real. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real. Like, I like my favorite part really is just like you just build relationships with people because you're on set for hours and hours and hours but like the amount of time that you actually spend in front of the camera is not long you know like it's not that long like you're really just chilling most of the time waiting for them to reset this do the scene go back to your seat chilling playing spades like it's like it's like that you know and and so when you get to do that with people that you enjoy like that's that's the best part to me because I've, I've met a lot of great people so far um friendships that I've built on set that have, you know, gone off set as well, you know? So that's, that's honestly been my favorite part so far. I, I love that. And that was a very, yeah. like, that was a, a Christian answer because if you felt, call, cause I will say not, not like fake Christian, but Christian, like, I believe you were called to that space because any other person would be, I just assume people would be like more of the flashiness or the, the, um, the superficial side, but you're saying relational side. And honestly, that's how we save lives with relationships. Yeah. So you're doing a good thing. That's great. I can't wait to, uh, to have BJ and I, we're thinking about watching the new, okay, wait, before I say that, <laughs> well, do you have news to announce? Do we have any place where you can watch and connect with you? Please give us the details. Yeah. So, um, I mean, a couple of projects that have come out over the past, couple of years um i did a hallmark movie called a nashville legacy and that's on um peacock you can watch that on peacock um i did a show called judge me not you know judge lynn toller from divorce court no um well, I, i'm sure bj does i don't i don't watch tv <laughs> that's so bad like i don't really watch tv as much uh, but no but keep going keep going because they, yeah, yeah. they do so, um <laughs> so judge lynn toller um wrote a story that's loosely based on her life um called judge me not that comes on all black TV and you can get that on like Amazon prime. It's an add on on Amazon prime, I believe. And um, I don't know where else it's streaming. Probably well, just on all black TV website as well. Gotcha. Um, so I did a few episodes of that show back in 2022. Um, and then what else? Oh my gosh. I, I could tell it. I was reading his Abby. I mean, we, I'll get you the details, everybody. I'll just put the link to that. Um, because you know, he's such a busy person. He out here <laughs> no, doing no. new things. So tell us about the new things. Yeah. So, um, so BMF black mafia family, that will be season three coming out March 1st. It's crazy to say, but it got here pretty fast. We, uh, we filmed that last, February through the end of June. And so it's just kind of crazy to say that it's already it's already here. Um that that still hasn't hit me at all. Like that the fact that I'm on that show hasn't hit me at all. Like I don't think it's gonna hit me until the world sees it, you know? Yeah. Um that's another story too. I gotta tell that story too, because this is uh this is another this is just another moment of like, okay, like I know this is for me. Like God made it very clear. And so, um, and again, speaking from my perspective, not saying what anybody else should do, it's just me, okay? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so to try to make a long story, you know, when black people be like, I'm gonna make a long story short, and it'd be like two hours. Oh yeah, they be like about to close. <laughs> right, right. Amen. But um, <laughs> so this is when I was personal training. This is February of 2023, and um, like I said before, I had like kind of hit a burnout point, and I was I was really like thinking about going to my boss and seeing if we could like work some different hours out. Cause what you got to understand about the job there, it, it wasn't like a franchise gym. It's like a, you know, mom and pop type type place. And so um, I was the only lead like full-time personal trainer there. So I'm training people like two to six people an hour, every hour for eight hours every day. So it was just, it was just a lot, you know? And so um, 
I had gotten to a point where I was kind of burned out, you know, and I remember talking to a friend um, about, man, like, I don't know what to do. And she kind of encouraged me to, to um, you know, talk to the Lord about what a solution may be. And so I remember going to bed that night. I remember the Lord waking me up in the middle of the night, telling me to write down what my needs were <laughs> for the job. He's like, write down like what you want salary wise and hours wise for this job. And I was like, okay. So I do that. Remembering that the Lord told me this, I was like, so whatever happens, like it's got to work out because he yeah. told me to do this. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to work the next day, you know, finished training for the day. It's the afternoon, met with my boss, told him kind of how I was feeling, where things were headed. Like I was like, in order for me to stay here and give my best to these clients, like this is what I need. Gave him what I typed up. He looked at it and said, I can't do that. Like immediately. And in my mind, I'm like, I like, hold up, God. I'm like, wait. I'm like, you just you told me to do this, right? And so I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean you can't do it? He's like, that's just not gonna fit like our model here. Like, I can't have you work less hours. I would just have to need I would need to hire somebody else. And I was like, so what are you saying? He's like, Well, I just think we need to go our separate ways at this point and you need to just focus on acting. And this is after I had been there for about a year. And I was like, very just caught up. I was like, okay. <laughs> So this is like the first week of February last year, right? So we're planning on February being my last month. And so um, the next week, I get an audition for BMF, which is, by the way, my eighth audition for the show. Not the first time I auditioned. It's my eighth audition for the show between seasons one and two. I auditioned seven times at this point. But this role is the biggest role that I've gotten so far. This is a, a recurring guest star role. So I'm like, yo, I... I got to get this. Like, this is my show. This is a show that I love with whether I'm on it or not. Like, this is something I'm tuned into every week. Yeah. So I do my audition, you know, felt good about it, whatever, whatever, sent it off. Um, something that I've learned too so far in my career is to like, don't think about it. Like once you're done with it, just move on with your life because in most cases it's, it's a no, <laughs> but Mm -hmm. If you don't think about it and then you get that call, you're like, oh, this you get is surprised. You know, oh. trick yourself. That's what I do with yeah, Amazon. Exactly. I buy myself stuff and send it to yeah. me. <laughs> and be like, oh snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but really to like keep your sanity as an actor, like if you're just getting a lot of auditions, like to try to think about every single one, be like, oh my God, I hope I get a call. Like it's just you're gonna yeah. drive yourself crazy. So you kind of just gotta do the job. Lord is in your hands now. Cool. So I was doing my best not to think about it, right? <laughs> and then um the next week i remember it was a monday my agent called me and said that i got an availability check which means they were asking what my availability was which is a great sign doesn't mean you booked anything yet but it means like they're considering you it's probably you between you and like you know it could be 15 20 other people at this point you know but then a couple of days later you get another call oh wait, wait, wait. actually i'm getting out of myself i'm getting out of myself a couple of days later okay I had also auditioned for another show this the same week that I auditioned for BMF, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of days later, the the uh, casting director for that project reaches out to me and said, "Hey, we loved your audition. We want to um, we want you to audition for a bigger role in the show, a series regular role in the show." Which all of 2022 was my prayer. I was like, "Lord, I want to be a series regular on the show because I want to be a working actor. That's been my goal from the jump. Like, I want this to be what I'm doing. I want to be able to make a living off of this." So they use them word series regular. I was like, okay, boom, boom. God, this is it. This got to be it, you know? So I was like, bet. Send the audition over. They send over the sides. I read the character description. I look at the scenes. Boom. Unfortunately, the scene was asking me to do some things that I'm not comfortable with personally. Um, so personally, I don't do nudity or sex scenes. Um, and that's what this character needed to do. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, I'm like, okay. Convictions being a little tested. I'm getting this audition for a big role on this show. I also know I'm not gonna have a job at the gym in two weeks. Like oh, I'm gosh, like, God, what we doing? <laughs> right. I'm like, God, what we doing? This is why it's important to have people around you that 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 know you and know who's God who God has called you to be. Call one of my boys and his wife. I'm like, yo, telling the situation. They're like, you're a grown man. You do what you got to do, but stand firm in your convictions. Like like don't let a role or your circumstances sway you from being who God has called you to be. And I was like, okay. It's like, I already knew the answer, but I was like, you, sometimes you just need somebody else to say it. <laughs> I was like, y'all are right. Okay. So reach back out to the director. Tell her, thank you so much for the opportunity, but because of what the character's calling for, I'm going to have to decline the audition. 
She said, okay, we'll still consider you for the other role. We'll let you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. That doesn't feel that great because that could have been a great opportunity, whatever, whatever. I remember, I, I'm never going to forget this moment. Go back, sit on my desk, pick up a book. I start reading. 42 minutes have gone by. My phone vibrates. I pick it up. I see an email drop and it says BMF booking offer 301. I was like, I was like, yo, <laughs> I got up on my, bro, I started screaming. Like I was screaming. I, I FaceTimed my people. I was like, yo, I'm crying. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> I can't believe this. And that's how it happened. That's how it happened right there. Yeah. It's like, it sound made up, but it's like, that really, that's really how it went down. And to this day, I'm still like, I wonder what would have happened if, you know, See? you never know. And yeah, you he's, just, know. he's just trying to, he was, that was a <laughs> test. I guess so. I'm just like, man, this would be a lot of tests, Lord. I'm trying to just, trying to just thrive. Why well, I got to yeah. get tested every moment? My prayer, but, my prayer right now is God, make it easier, please. I'm but like, I don't know if that's ever going to be an answer prayer. But I'm going to still keep praying it, you know? That's what I'm saying. Because we study for tests. And if you study for a test, it shouldn't be that hard. Facts. Yes, <laughs> that's I'm what like, I'm saying. The test so, at every quarter. Mm, but. So, yes, that is how I ended up booking BMF, which is crazy. That is crazy. I'm I'm really excited. So, that's great. Yeah. Congratulations. I know it hasn't hit you Thank yet. Thank you so much. But it's going to hit you uh quite soon. So okay, so. This is this is good. I I have so many more questions for you, but I'm gonna hold them, <sighs> hold them for the sake of the time limit. But um, <laughs> I will say, so how can people, I guess, follow you or connect with you and see more projects that you're gonna be working on, hopefully soon in the future? Yeah, so I'm I'm really only active on Instagram at Terry Allen Brown Jr. The full government. I don't know why I gave up my full government like that. Terry Allen was taken, so I was like, I gotta do something. But um yeah, that's where I post pretty much whatever's going on. Um I'm like on TikTok a little bit, but I'm just not not consistent enough. Not consistent. Trying to get more consistent at it. But um but yeah, Terry Allen Brown Jr. on Instagram. Huh. That's that's where you'll find out. So that's super easy. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's super easy. That's great. I, I will say that's what I was kind of concerned with. I didn't know whether or not you were going by uh, Terry, TJ, Terry <laughs> Allen, Terry Brown. I know. What, so what do we you call you? What's crazy? What's what's crazy is um so so the very first job I booked, I was going by Terry Brown Jr. But then I was like, uh, I want to switch it up. Like I get something a little more flavor. <laughs> Terry Allen. What's yeah. The seasoning on? Middle name. Right. <laughs> but then what was funny is this past season on BMF, like they always not messed my name up, but like every week it would either say like Terry Allen Brown Jr. or Terry Allen Brown. And I'm like, I, I don't know what they think my name, but it was, just, it was just something different every day. So I was like, I don't, I don't know what the credits are going to say, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, but my stage name as of right now is Terry Allen. Terry Allen. Cool. Yes. That, okay. Well, great. Look, I am a prayerful that God will just continue to elevate you as you continue to keep your convictions in that industry. Um, but then also, um, I'm just really excited about what's upcoming for you and for your family. I know you're really close to your sister, right? Yeah. yeah, for all yeah. Of, yes. Mm -hmm. For all of them. I, I remember even back in college, I think you were yeah. really cool with your sister. Okay, cool. I hope yeah. I get to meet her. If you're watching <laughs> this, Hey girl, <laughs> <laughs> she about to have, she about to have twins next month she's pregnant oh. with twins right now which is crazy yeah that means you're gonna have a lot of uncle responsibility yeah, i have a lot of, i'm saying we gotta have you a working actor. yeah yeah exactly. that's what i'm saying you know it's crazy <laughs> but but look thank you so much for being a guest on the show it was so cool to reconnect with you um hopefully we get to do this again so great yeah for sure thank you so much for having me i appreciate you <laughs>